We can now discuss this with our guest, uh, Ahmed al Barai, a lecturer at Aydin University in Istanbul. Uh, good to have you with us. Welcome to RT. Now, the U.S. President, uh, Donald Trump, he's just tweeted for the fourth time in a week about the protests in Iran. And let's just remind ourselves what he wrote. Big protests in Iran. The people are finally getting wise as to how their money and wealth is being stolen and squandered on terrorism. Looks like they will not take it any longer. The USA is watching very closely for human rights violations. Mr. Alborai, do you think comments like these from the US president could be counted as foreign interfer interference, considering some protesters are likely to be encouraged by Trump's words? Well, I believe this kind of intervention from Donald Trump is not going to serve anybody of the protesters, the middle class who took to the street asking for, for more economic reform, asking for more jobs and employment uh, to have uh, of living. This is not going to help them because in the uh, in public in the Iran, a Donald Trump and the United States are considered as the big devil and they're not interested in the interest of the Iranians. If if they are interested in the Iranian interest, at, a, for a, at least in the nuclear deal, they would be helping lifting the sanctions and empowering more people on the ground, but they're not doing this. So the, inter the intervention by any means is not going to help the protesters on the ground. Rather, it's going to be uh, exploited and may uh, took advantage by the regime if they're going to manhandle the, the, the demonstrations on the ground. This is going to give them a pretext to doing this. They're going to use it as a propaganda. Look, Donald Trump is supporting these people who are talking to the street. They're they're going to be um, a make use uh, by different actors in the region, and this is not going to help them by any means. Whatever happened to Trump's promises that America won't seek to impose its way of life on other nations? Have these been completely forgotten? Definitely this is a case when we look to Iraq. At the time the, uh, the Americans came to Iraq, the, the main objective was for uh, George W. Bush is to bring democracy. And we've seen since 2003 till this moment what the American policies have brought to the, to the whole region, mainly to Iraq and Syria. It is a big failure, mainly because of the lack of a clear strategy for the Middle East. And that that's why they're not trustworthy. That's why I told you these kind of t tweets, these kind of uh, interventions from the American administration is not uh, welcomed in the whole region, whether in Iran, whether among the politicians or the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, the people on the ground, because they've already experienced what the United States have for the Middle East. Mainly, this Trump is not considered in any uh, long-term uh, construction project or empowerment for any uh, political a, a, a opposition on the ground. What they're interested in is just their own interest along with Israel and their allies in the uh, Gulf region, mainly with Saudi Arabia and Israel, and that's going to be against Iran. He said that one of the biggest uh, the, the scandal of the um, modern history of the United States is the deal with Iran, uh, the nuclear deal with Iran, and that was the biggest loser, as he called uh, his uh, predecessor, Barack Obama, when he uh, managed to strike that deal with Iran. And he is going to renegotiate the whole deal and try to uh, scrap it if he can. This is not going to help the people. Mm. This is not going to be welcomed at all among the politicians or the normal people. Let's talk about these economic problems that the Iranian government is struggling with right now, and that's leading to all of this, this chaos on the streets of, um, of Iran, of course. What exactly caused these economic problems, and does the Iranian government have the capability to, uh, to, to solve the issue? 
To be honest, in Iran, they, if you listen to the chants, to the slogan, these kind of protesters and demonstrators across the, the scene in Iran are using, they're talking about Rouhani as the dictator and uh, the, the person who is uh, leading this corruption, uh, unemployment, high inflation, uh, more than the half of the uh, Iranian population is under the line of poverty, and that's why they're saying uh, we we need more reform. But the problem is where they started, they started in Mashhad city, which is the city, the stronghold of Rouhani's uh, former uh, candidate. I mean, the competitor in the last election of Rouhani, Ibrahim Raisi, is the, the one, the leader of this city. And it mm. seems that these kind of hardliners are trying to make use and mobilize, uh, provoke these kind of masses in order to undermine Rouhani's regime yeah. and this is why it's not going in my opinion it's not going to lead to more massive demonstrations because the middle class are not uh, interested in being okay. used as tools by these kind of hard lions and conservatives mm -hmm. on the other hand they do not have a clear leadership that is going to lead them through these kind of demands to lead to any kind of radical uh, development in terms of the reform in terms of the economic growth okay. they're also chanting by other like leave um, Syria alone, leave B Palestine alone, we, and mm -hmm. we need to make to take care of our own country. These Mr. kind Ahmed of Al political slogans. I do apologise for interrupting you that, but we're all out of time. Apologies again. That's Ahmed Al Baraya, lecturer at Aydin University in Istanbul.